Hi, everybody, and welcome to the inaugural edition of the MCHD Paramedic Podcast 360. Today, we have our clinical specialist, cardiovascular guru, Brad Ward with us. Hi, Brad. Hello. So, the why of Podcast 360. Podcast 360 was developed by our clinical team here at MCHD to supplement our MCHD Paramedic Podcast audiocast. There's some things that you just need visuals for. And so these short three to five minute video clips are meant to supplement our education from the audio cast series. Uh, so we hope you like them. If you do, give us a like, send us your comments. Uh, you can reach us at the podcast email at podcast at mchd-tx.org. That's podcast at mchd-tx.org. All right, Brad, let's get started. Tell us about the EKG. So we're all familiar with the basic EKG and the basic waves that go along with it. We have the P wave, which represents atrial depolarization, the QRS complex, which represents ventricular depolarization, and then the T wave, which represents ventricular repolarization. Today we're gonna to focus on the ST segment. So why is the ST segment important? What does it represent? The ST segment is the time between ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization. It's where we can see injury, it's where we can see current infarct. We're gonna focus at a point called the J point, which is the end of the S wave. And for our purposes, we're gonna say smiley and frowny for the ST segment as far as elevation goes. And we'll show you that right here. Not all ST elevation equals an infarct, but we're gonna talk about mimics on another video cast. Yeah, that's a spoiler alert. So. As Brad talked about, why do we care about the ST segment? We care because that, that's the place where we're gonna diagnose a STEMI or current of injury, ischemic injury. And why is this important? Because time is muscle. We know that out, clinical outcomes are directly related to the time it takes us to make the diagnosis and get the patient to revascularization. So according to the AHA guidelines, Brad, can you just talk to the viewers about what is the diagnostic criteria for a STEMI? Sure. Today, So we're going to have one millimeter of contiguous elevation in the limb leads or two millimeters of contiguous elevation in the precordial leads. A new onset left bundle branch block is not diagnostic for a STEMI. And so by contiguous leads, if you look at this, it looks, it looks a little wavy and wild, but I, I love this photo here, Brad, and a picture's worth a thousand words, right? By contiguous leads, we mean in a vascular distribution that is contiguous. So one in, in AVL, two, three in F for an inferior, an anterior or septal V1 through V4, or V5 and six, a lateral infarct. So they have to be contiguous. It can't be lead two and V3. Gotcha, would you consider V6 and lead one anatomically contiguous? Yes. Good. I would throw me off there. Every chance I get. <laughs> Let's look at an example of an EKG. So you guys take a minute, have a look at this EKG, and then Brad and I will give you our interpretation. Go ahead, Brad. So I see sinus rhythm. Right. And I see elevation in lead two, lead three, and AVF with ST depression in AVL for sure and debatable in lead one. Right, so what's your diagnosis for that? I would call this an inferior MI. I would all day long, in the proper clinical context. Remember, it always goes back, we're gonna talk about STEMI mimics, but it's, it's the EKG and the clinical history, so an actual real patient with it, but I agree. How about this one, Brad? So I see sinus rhythm again with ST depression in lead two, lead three, and AVF with ST elevation in V1 through V5 and also AVL. Yeah, so it's a really, really large territory infarct. I, I would agree. Uh, and really an ant, big anterior uh, LV STEMI. Agreed. All right, so our STEMI activation rules, right? If it smells like a duck and quacks like a duck, just activate the duck, right? So we're in the business of overcall here. So we expect you to overcall someone. We do our QI, what's, what's the going rate, Brad, that we're expected to overcall these About things? About a third. About a third of these things, right? So remember, 
I think the take home points here, are we're gonna overcall these, but remember vascular occlusion is a dynamic, dynamic process, right? We're meant to clot and unclot or we would all, we wouldn't be having this conversation because we'd both be dead. So that being said, what do you tend to see? You see dynamic changes on EKGs. So you can have current of injury or a STEMI in a moment and then a minute later repeat that EKG and it will look stone cold normal. We've all seen those patients who had a fairly normal looking EKG that had a sudden cardiac arrest. We cardiovert them back into a rhythm, get ROSC, get the EKG, and then realize, lo and behold, they've had a STEMI. So the right. main takeaway there is that in any cardiac patient or suspected cardiac patient, multiple EKGs are better than one. Just about wraps it up for our EKG and STEMI diagnostic video. Uh, thanks for sitting in on the first inaugural video. Yes, sir. And thank you all for watching. Again, if you have any questions or comments, ideas for new casts, please email us at the podcast email. It's podcast at mchd-tx.org. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.